Good morning, good morning, everybody. It is 5.38 in the morning, 63 degrees, and I'm just now realizing what day is it? What day is it? It's hump day. <laughs> happy, happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Um, yeah, these past couple of nights, because I've just been so exhausted and fallen asleep before the sun sets, I've been able at least to wake up with my husband um, and see him for a little bit, a few minutes in the morning at least, instead of just the normal, you know, I'm sound asleep and he kisses me on the head. Sometimes I remember it, sometimes I don't. Um, but, so... And I just, you know, from, I went yesterday to two stores and just ran a couple errands, which I need to post those. <laughs> and, um, but just that, just that exhausted me. Um, so, because I decided to get out yesterday and be a, a big girl and go do stuff on my own. Of course, it pooped me out. So then after dinner last night, I was exhausted. So, um, but anyway, so that's that. Sorry. I know y'all can't see me. <laughs> I'll be back over there in just a minute. Um, anyways, so mom had an appointment with her doctor yesterday. Um, her urogynecologist, which actually is also my doctor and also my daughter's Molly and Madison's gynecologist as well. And, um, he was originally going to do her hysterectomy and all that, but that's when we found the cancer and everything. So he sent her to the oncologist to do that surgery, to do her hysterectomy and take care of all that. And now that that's done, he's going to do the bladder surgery on her that he had to do on me. Um, and so she's going to have that on Friday the 16th. So she had to go to an appointment with him yesterday. And of course, and I think I've told y'all that, you know, he's really, really, really wanting to put me on Suboxone and try to get me off of the pain meds for a little while and just kind of let my body reevaluate itself, I guess, basically. And he, he basically wants me to start from scratch. He wants me to get off of the pain meds and he feels that, you know, once my body gets completely clean from that, um, that kind of like, basically, like I said, just reevaluating my body. He, he feels like that basically because, you know, I've always taken such heavy prescription narcotics, you know, meaning, you know, the morphines, I take morphine Dilaudid, um, fentanyl, you know, I wear two fentanyl patches. I wear one here and one here, <laughs> kind of down, basically, not to be gross, where my tummy skin hangs, because you have to put fentanyl patches, it has to be, it's fat absorbed, so you have to put it where you have the most fat on your body, well, <clears throat> I don't have, really have much, so I just kind of have to put it, I wear two patches, but yeah, so I wear fentanyl patches, take Dilaudid, I mean, everything, morphine, um, I'm on oxys, um, I mean, I've done hydros, Percocet, you name it, and I'm on it or have done it. Um, I was doing morphine, Dilaudid, and fentanyl. Now I'm oxys, Dilaudid, and fentanyl. But even that, it, it my pain never, ever, ever goes away. Um, and so basically, not only is he an awesome doctor and an awesome urogynecologist, but um, he also actually, believe it or not, runs... Um, clinics for people that have issues with pain pills. Um, now, mind you, I'm not addicted. Um, of course, he says your body is addicted, whether you know it or not. Um, now, I know my body is addicted, like on these days that I'm super, super sick and I either can't keep my meds down or I'm just so sick that I become careless and I don't take them. I would absolutely go through withdrawals. In fact, when mom and I took our trip to Maine, withdrawals put me in the hospital because I had been so sick that I couldn't stay on top of my meds. So my body did go through with the withdrawal, <clears throat> but I'm not addicted as far as, oh my God, I need pain pills. I need them now. I'm going to go buy them on the street. 
if I was addicted that way, I wouldn't have like 300 morphine pills <clears throat> sitting in the bathroom, you know, that haven't been touched, if that was the case. I wouldn't have Oxy sitting in there that hadn't been touched. I wouldn't have fentanyl that's sitting in there that hasn't been touched, if that was the case. But I do get what he says, especially because I've basically been on him since I was diagnosed, and that's two and a half years almost. And so he just basically wants to, to, to put me on Suboxone to get me off of those, and then let's completely reevaluate my pain level and see how my body handles it starting from scratch. Um, I've been telling him that I'll consider it and that I'll think about it, but I'm scared. Well, of course, yesterday when mom went in for her appointment, you know, the first thing that he says basically to her is, so is your daughter ready to feel better yet? <laughs> so, you know, I know that he cares about me. I mean, he's been my doctor and my daughter's doctor for since they came into puberty and they're 25 and 28 years old. I mean, he basically was the doctor that started them on birth control and, you know, things when they were younger and uh, now they're grown women, you know, with partners. Um, so I know that, you know, he, he's a great guy and a great doctor and I know he wants the best. But it's like people just don't understand the pain that I have. And I'm willing to give it a shot, even though it scares the crap out of me. But it's like, it aggravates me when I tell him, you know, Dr. Lauer, but you don't understand. Like, my pain gets so bad in my face that I can't even eat on times and at certain days sometimes because it hurts so bad just to chew or to move my mouth and my jaws. The sockets, my orbital sockets hurt. It's like everything in my head and my face hurts so bad because the tumor's constantly pressing on like pain central and nerve central. And that's why even taking things like all at the same time, morphine, dilaudid, and fentanyl, it's still not controlling or combating the pain um, because I just have that strong of a pain. So, but... I'm gonna, I've got an appointment with my pain doctor on the 12th, and so I'm going to talk to her about it. And I know she'll be supportive. She supports me in everything that I do. But she also knows how much pain I'm in. And she worries about that because she, like all the other doctors, and him too, I, they just want me to stay as comfortable as possible. And it sucks because even on all these narcotics, it still doesn't bring my pain. My pain never goes below a two or a three, ever, ever, ever. And my two or a three is somebody else's probably seven or eight. You know, I have a high tolerance for pain. So for me to say that I'm in pain, somebody else would be rolling on the floor screaming, dying for the ambulance in the emergency room. But... And so, but that makes it harder to treat pain because I have such a high pain threshold and high tolerance. And then the fact that I have a tolerance to medications in general. So, I don't know, but I'm going to try. I think give it a shot and just see. I'm just tired of hurting y'all. And I do, I hate the fact that on these days where I am sick and I can't see on top of my meds. I know, I hate it. And I'm going to dread it because I know that my body goes through those withdrawals. And those withdrawals suck, y'all. I, like, the first time I went through withdrawals from being so sick and not being able to keep my meds down, and it put me in the hospital, like, I was sitting there thinking, how do drug addicts do it? Like, if I was a drug addict or a heroin addict, the first time I went through withdrawals, I'd be like, hell to the gnaw. No more. There is no drug worth me taking to put me through that. It's horrid. I do not understand how people addicted to drugs, whether it be prescription or street, can go through such a horrible thing like withdrawals where you're sick and you're sweating and you're cold and you're vomiting. and Oh, my God, it's just horrid. I don't see how anybody could ever touch a drug after that. Hell, even after I went through them medically, I didn't even want to take my prescription meds again because I was like, I do not want that to happen. But, I mean, I had to, but so... But anyway, so that's that. So, I don't know. I'm just still going to think about it. Give it, you know, a couple weeks. But, um, and I am going to find some time and sit down and reply to 
all of y'all because you know how important that is to me. And I hate going this long without responding. And I'm so, 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 so sorry, guys. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but I will respond. Y'all know that. And know that I love you when I can't or I don't respond. Please, 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 please. Y'all know how much I love you. So, but I'm going to try to just, um, said I made the bed at least. And it's 5.48 in the morning, y'all. And my bed is made. Look, I can prove it. About <laughs> 48. But, um, and then I've got to run to Walmart, pick up some water and cat litter here in a little bit. Horror. Y'all can't see, but I can see white specks coming out from the <laughs> dried, um, hair gel from yesterday. But, anyway, so... Okay, gang, I'm going to go, but have a beautiful hump day, and I'll be back.